welcome to this totally unscheduled video um, where I just want to talk about this channel and past the channel and the future of this channel and a bit of behind the scenes and a bit about booktube and a bit about YouTube and um, yeah I don't get to do this very much because I feel like the content of this channel is very kind of focused and singular um, so yeah I just want to talk about where I'm at and stuff. First piece of behind scenes is that I have a notebook, a red notebook, that contains all of my notes for every video I do and I usually literally stick it to my tripod so it's like right under the, the lens so I can kind of look at it without looking like I'm massively looking away um, but right now I'm just gonna hold it because I can't be bothered to do that. And I thought I'd bring it up now so I can casually refer to my notes and it look like it's part of the video. So let's start at a very good place to start, the beginning. I made this channel because I started giving a shit about reading, that was pretty much it. I didn't read a lot before then and then around the time I started this channel I was watching a few booktubers and seeing them do reviews and it just being like this is what I liked about it and this is what I didn't like about it um, and I thought there could be so much more to it than that because I, I'm sorry about the background noise, the windows are open because it's really hot, anyway. I am. Um, I generally consume media based on three things, and I think everybody does, but they haven't really realised it. One is for just pure entertainment, mindless entertainment. Two is for gathering knowledge, just becoming a better, more well-rounded person for knowing more things. Um, and three is for the social value of like, oh, you watch Game of Thrones as well, let's talk about it, kind of thing. And I feel like books at the time were giving me a lot of entertainment and not a lot of like return on investment in other ways um, and YouTube is obviously a great place for like the social aspect of that because it's you talking about the things you've read and then other people that have also read them or haven't get to you know social space that's the point of it and then the knowledge thing I felt was really lacking on YouTube I didn't see a lot of reviews that really spoke to like what they got out of the text. So I pretty much wanted to make that, I just wanted to get more out of the things I was reading by thinking about them more and then making videos out of them to remember that information. And it started with literally no production values. <laughs> like, I don't know if you've seen the early videos of this channel, but if you look back, it is actually comical. No cuts, webcam, trash. And the reason is I didn't want to invest a lot in this channel because investment is scary and then you get attached and then it's an obligation. And that's a lot of stuff that I didn't want to have to deal with. And then slowly, slowly, I just start, I, I was like, oh, I've already got my camera set up. I may as well make it better. It's a major scope creep. And then you end up having to put on makeup and have lights. I don't have lights right now. I just, I don't own lights right now, but I've got windows. I have to do this at a very particular time of day. I have to angle the camera. I have to put on clothes. I have to edit it and all of that kind of stuff and it just ends up being quite a lot of time. So I've gone through phases of not doing a lot of this channel. Um, I have a really great excuse of I usually work for the whole summer in America where I just don't, can't do this. Um, so you know I have if I have that to look forward to or I've just come back from that it's like what's the point in trying to keep up a consistent YouTube schedule. Um, but now as of I guess six or seven eight weeks ago I've been uploading every Monday and I'm really happy with that. This channel is a really easy thing to not have an existential crisis about because the content is like so obvious. Read a book, talk about it, that's that's all you need to do. Um, so if you're like I'm just gonna make a video a week, you will. But I'm now getting to that point of being like oh I have so many ideas for videos and so much stuff I want to do and talk about that maybe I should make it two times a week. I actually have like a really solid plan for what I want a second video a week to be. It involves these books hint, hint, hint. Um, but I have to stop myself. I have to stop myself because when I invest a lot of time in YouTube it is usually at the expense of something I actually do need to do. So right now I'm doing a master's and I have two months and like three days um, to do this massive final project that we don't get much guidance on. I'm not like in class a lot of the time um, but it is one of those things that is just completely self-directed and I have to do it and I haven't even started and it's really easy to I mean I also work like three days a week at a normal job um, and then the rest of my time it's like oh but you know I'll spend that morning making a YouTube video like literally right now when I could be working so I know I have to stop that I have to quash that desire at least for another two months but then after that is a bit of a trickier question because after that I'm kind of gearing up towards quitting my job and 
doing kind of more entrepreneurial things all of the time, which is kind of terrifying, definitely exciting. Um, but it is also very clear at that point that if you are investing a lot of time in something and not getting any money back, it puts so much more pressure on the rest of the time you have to invest in things that do give you money. So what I'm saying is maybe, maybe I want this YouTube channel to make me money because I really do want to do more videos on it and spend more time on it, but I cannot justify that investment at all unless I make some money out of it. So that comes along with a lot of things of which I have some notes about. <laughs> okay, I wrote, don't want to play the game, kind of do. So this is all a fucking game. And most people don't realize to what extent this entire thing is a game. Everybody collabs with each other. I mean, for fun as well, like it's great building audiences with your friends, but like it's, it's very much a strategic move for people to get more subscribers. You know, when people at the end of videos say, you know, like and comment and subscribe and blah, blah, blah. Um, they're not doing that just vapidly. Literally, there are statistics saying that saying, literally just saying those words will get you more likes, more comments and more subscribers. And I don't want to play that game. I don't want to like have to make an end screen because, because it will make me more successful. But also I kind of do. I've never done that before. The thing that I really don't want to do is compromise the kind of content I make. Because most booktubers don't do individual reviews on every book they read. That's kind of an anomaly. It's quite silly. Most people do like wrap ups and TBRs and just other bookish related content. Um, and I cannot give up doing a book for every, doing a video for every book I read because that's literally the meat of the channel. That is the entire purpose of the channel. Um, but it's really inaccessible, obviously. Like I wouldn't, I don't think I would watch half of my videos if I wasn't me. And that's why most people make videos on more general topics. And I'll definitely like my book hauls and stuff are the things that are viewed the most on this channel because they're the most things that are applicable to the most people. But I find a lot of YouTube channels are so gratuitous and they go completely from I'm making this content for me, which is really what I'm doing for the book videos, to like this is something that other people would appreciate but is it's just it's just like gratuitous crap. This is very much like a spectrum um, but on this side I kind of have quite a lot of disdain for it. I see some people that have built audiences that are like really there to bolster up the fact that what they think they're doing is important. I think there's a lot about like kind of fashion and lifestyle vloggers and yeah there are there is great ones with some really good content but a lot of it is so self-serving and audience serving without like what at that point what are you doing what are you contributing to society and the world what i'm saying is i really don't want to go down that route um and i feel like trying to, if i was going to be like i'm going to have like 50,000 subscribers by this time next year i would have to jack in the book reviews and i'm not going to do that um Okay, for context, I have a lot of friends in the London YouTube community, like I know quite a lot of people that do YouTube full time. Um, and also I used to be Tumblr famous, lol. When I was like 16, I was, I had like 70,000 subscribers on Tumblr and then I left it because I wasn't interested in doing that kind of thing anymore. And I think you can only, like a lot of my YouTube friends that are, you know, they're constantly aiming to get more subscribers and stuff and they don't realize how fucking fickle it is and you can only do that once you've kind of stepped away from it or once you've started dipping or that kind of thing um because until then like everyone's just saying how amazing you are and you don't oh, anyway what i'm saying this is such a tangent what i'm saying is that i like i feel like i have oh this is really loud hold on a sec what i'm saying is that i think i have like a good perspective on how to have a successful YouTube channel and also how to not be a jackass. I feel like I just confess something to you when really I don't have any, if I wanted to devote my life to having a lot of YouTube subscribers, I could definitely do it. I know how to put together a YouTube video. I know how to market it. I know how to look okay. I know how to make the content. Um, I don't really want to do that, but I do kind of, maybe I want to be like a bit more successful um, just so this can be something that I don't feel guilty about investing a load of time in when I don't have a lot of money coming in from other places. Okay, next topic. Money. Where does it, where does it come from? Um, 
it's not really the next topic, I guess it's the exact same topic. Uh, most YouTubers make money off sponsorships, but you can only really get sponsorships if you have like plus 20k? I don't, anyway, I don't want sponsorships anyway, um, but most people when they get to that level don't make that much money off uh, advertising, they make like 100 quid a month off advertising or something like that. Um, roughly like one pound per thousand views if you want to be prescriptive about it. I make so much less than that. I've, I actually recently turned on adverts on all of my videos and I didn't have that for the longest time because I'm like no I want to be pure um, and then my friend pointed out to me like people don't realize that if you have an advert on your video it's because you have an app it's it's they, they just think that's how YouTube works and you're losing out on making money from it um, but I've made like 50 cents in the last month the last the month that I've had it on which is nothing saying it's had like lots of views 20,000 views something like that anyway the main way I would like to make money on um on youtube is just through affiliate links and i have that already in all my videos and i think that it would it's the kind of thing that just like the more people that watch videos the the you know it's it's going to be a direct correlation and it has much better rates and it's also based on somebody actually acting on something um so ages ago like around when i started making this youtube video, uh, maybe like a year and a half i don't know at some point in time i made a um url shortener for and you may have noticed this and been like oh that's cool you may have just been like oh there's a link um but i literally bought a domain which is like cha.rs and then slash and then it's uh, encoded something and then it's slash like um gr for goodreads or like amzn for amazon and stuff um which i think was a really it was quite a fun thing to code actually oh context i'm also i'm like mostly a web developer in real life um so that's how i did that um but it is it's just a very satisfying thing to have and I have like really good stats on what people click and stuff like that. Um, anyway, what am I saying about this? Right, so if you if you watch videos about books and then you want to buy that book and you want to buy it online and not in real life, definitely like always check and see if they have affiliate links because that's such a great kickback for, for people that make videos about books. Um, I also like started refing Audible trials recently. You may have seen it in the last couple of videos. I got invited to this Audible, Audible like affiliate podcasting thing um, a while ago, and I didn't pay attention to it. And then I, I looked it up when I made a video about something where I mentioned podcasts. Um, and you get fifteen dollars for every person that signs up to a trial. I mean, that's loads of. Money. If you can convince people to actually do that, that's loads of money. And the funny thing about Audible trials is that they don't give you any scope for like how to present it so you know how some some youtubers have like literal sponsorships for every one of their videos now like squarespace and whatever um if it's sponsored by audible it like very often isn't directly sponsored by audible they've just got a really good affiliate link and then they're like let's you know act as if that's wow we're really going on tangents now <laughs> and next we have proofs um yeah this will be of interest to you if you want to start a booktube channel or are just interested in that um when booktubers get books for review uh it's kind of cool like it's it's not it's like oh you you think that i'm worth you sending me something that is worth like a tenner i know that's not a lot but it's just it feels really good um and for, for quite a while i was like how does this how does this happen and then i looked at my emails the other week and i was like oh wait this is this has just happened for me um it's one of those things where they will like publishing houses will directly contact you you get so many um so many like thing emails from people like independent authors and stuff that's why a lot of people have in their description like i won't be i won't be accepting self-published authors because there's just a, a lot of that going around um but this is also a thing where you can reach out to you can reach out to publishing to publishers um to like their pr teams and be like hey i've got this youtube channel you even if you have like a cup if you just need like a 100 plus people watching your videos and that's worth it for them to send you a book. So I get offers to review proofs and stuff um, quite a lot and I tend to reject them because I take so much pride in like w reading whatever the fuck I want to read whenever I want to read it, uh, which is part of the reason why this isn't 
as successful a YouTube channel because it's full of just random shit. Um, but I don't want to change my reading habits because of my YouTube channel, that would be crazy. So yeah, I tend to say no, but you still have those contacts. So then if a book is coming out that you really want to review or, or they've released or an old cop, like whatever, you can just be like, hey, just wondering if you could send me a copy of that book for me to review on my YouTube channel. And you just have that, have that clout somehow. And they're just, they're totally more than happy to do that. So that's really fun. I also don't do that very much, but I like the idea that I can. <laughs> there are like two books being released in the next six months that I definitely do want review copies for, and then you can get them before they're released. Okay, I have two more things. Um, the seven star rating system. You may have seen this, it's like the first line in the description of any book review I do, but I, I rate, I star thing, I have like five stars and then, a, and then a pipe and then two more stars. And this is because five stars mean jack all. They, they mean absolutely nothing now. Three is not average, three is not okay. People are not harsh enough. Um, and it's really hard to like fight against that and give a book that you liked three stars. I get, well, yeah. Um, so anyway, I just decided to add two more stars and they are for kind of like exceeds expectations and phenomenal. <laughs> um, I think just like that differentiation at the top is really lacking. And when I came out with this system, um, I was like, this is just something that the entire world needs to adopt. And I still do think that. I genuinely think, I have a lot of like medium sized projects that I'm like, if I devoted three months of my life to that, um, that would just, there's no way that wouldn't be successful. If I wrote like a fuck ton of press releases and sent them out to like every online shop, every retail, just like, any place that reviews things, they'd be like, oh right, yeah. And then if we all do the seven star system, then maybe it'll actually be useful. That's just a disparate business idea, which I'm not enacting anytime soon, but I think it's super useful to have on here. Do, does it make sense to you? Is it obvious what it is? Um, because to me, it's like a very intuitive, like, oh, it has more stars than five stars, or it has five stars, but there's also two empty stars. It just, it just speaks wonders. And feel free to adopt that. If you want that in your life, in your booktube channel, on your billion dollar online retailer business, um, just do it. Like, it's great. And the last thing I have to talk about is my authority as a bookish person. So as I said at the start of this video, I didn't read as a child. I didn't even really read as a teenager. I properly started reading when I started this YouTube channel. I mean, I guess I read a few books a year before that since I was like, 15, but I was never a bookish person. I didn't take English as an A-level. I It was always my worst subject in school. Not to say I was bad, I was a pretty good student overall, but I was a maths nerd and I, I went to art school. I'm not particularly literarily educated whatsoever. So why the fuck do I get to sit here and preach to you about my thoughts about books? And I feel like there are two sides of this coin. One is why is it that only people that have like masters in English can start booktube channels? It's quite an elitist, gross thing to exist. We can all have opinions. Um, and the other side is like, genuinely, what am I bringing to the table here that anybody else can't? I like to think that it's quite nice having some, like, I don't want to be like, you have to have read all of these books or you, you know, you need to have got further education in English or whatever. Um, I think it's quite nice to just be like, no, you can be here and enjoy it as a space just because you enjoy books. And that's like, that's the only requirement. And that's lovely. But I'm not gonna lie and say that if I didn't study more Englishy things, this wouldn't be a better chapter. Is that double negative work? I just get intimidated sometimes by the idea that booktube has to be like, you, your identity is a bookish person. Um, and that is really not mine. Like that's my th th fourth thing that I do probably in a hierarchy. And that's okay. And that's great. And as long as people still think I have interesting shit to say in these videos, I'm gonna keep making them. And even after that, because I'm really making them for myself so I can look back and be like, oh, what did I think of 1984? And that's, I love it. So this has been a very long chat about me and booktube and books and youtube and fame and yeah you know what it's about because you just fucking saw it and this is another example of me doing that like i'm gonna play into the game and i'm gonna round up exactly what i just said but seriously i am interested in your opinions on pretty much everything i've said um so let me know and i am going to try and not make 
more than one YouTube video a week for the next two months so I actually do other things and I may just fail because I'm enjoying this a lot at the moment. I will see you on Monday for a real book video. Bye.